Hey everybody, today I'm out at the Detroit Auto Show taking a look at the all new Chevy Equinox EV. This is the first of two very exciting electric vehicles coming up from General Motors soon. I actually really should say three because we're gonna be getting an Equinox EV, a Blazer EV, and a Silverado EV in very, very short order. This is gonna be really important for EV adoption in the US because this is gonna start around $30,000, give you approximately 250 miles of all electric range, and it's gonna come with pretty quick charging. 11.5 kilowatts charging standard AC level two, 150 kilowatts DC fast charging. That's not the fastest in the segment, but it's pretty decent compared with most of the competition at this price point. And then really interestingly, the upper end trims are gonna give you the option of a 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger. Now, as its name implies, this is about the same size as the Chevy Equinox gasoline version. It is a little bit longer, a little bit lower, and a little bit wider, but really interesting twist crazy wide tires. This model, which is not the new RS, which is the sporty trim, this is just an LT trim. This one has 275 width tires on really wide wheels. These are pretty wide tires. And even the base version of the Equinox is gonna get 255 width tires. Let me know what you think about this two-tone color scheme going on here. I think it really works in blue. I wanna see what it looks like in other colors. Now, if you get the RS version, the front grille is gonna change a little bit. It's gonna be blacked out. We're gonna get some extra blacked out accessories around the vehicle. You can see that aerodynamics is really important for any EV. So we get a sort of pinched in greenhouse, much flatter siding, and then pop in and out door handles. I'm not allowed to touch the door handles myself. We're gonna to have to ask someone to open the vehicle, but we will take a look inside. Also, we have some pretty aerodynamic roof rails right there, an aerodynamic spoiler et here on the back, and fans of windshield wipers rejoice because there is a windshield wiper right there on the back. As you'd expect, we have full LED taillights back here in a really distinctive design that wraps right from one side all the way across to the other. And then we have that Chevy logo right there in the middle. Lots of aerodynamic treatment going on to this lower portion, the rear portion of the vehicle as well. Shiny black plastic with some sparkly bits right in there backup camera in that section right there. And this particular trim is the all-wheel drive model. So we get Equinox all-wheel drive and the three little bars basically indicating this is the electric Equinox. Now let's move around towards the front of the vehicle. As you'd expect, charging happens behind door number one right in front of the driver's door. There are two different battery packs available. The small battery pack is gonna give you a front wheel drive vehicle, 210 horsepower, approximately 250 miles of range. So this is right in the same neighborhood as the Chevy Bolt that it is spiritually replacing, even though this is considerably larger and more comfortable than that Chevy Bolt. If you want more range, you'll be able to get about 300 miles of range with the big battery pack and up to 290 horsepower in that model. But the drivetrain systems in the Equinox are gonna be a little bit different than in the upcoming Blazer EV. That's gonna be available with rear wheel drive. This one is gonna be front wheel drive or all wheel drive. So all models are always going to have a motor right there under the hood. And that's the big reason that this is not going to feature any kind of storage under that hood. So no frunk, no front trunk, whatever you wanna call it, no place to store your bags, your chargers, or your goodies. That's all gonna happen in the rear. Speaking of that storage area, back here you'll find about 27 or more cubic feet of storage space. Official details are just a little bit floating in the air right now. This is approximately the same kind of cargo storage capacity that you'll find in a regular gasoline Equinox, but it is a little bit smaller than some of the gasoline competition in this segment. Now, if you fold down the second row seats, then you'll get nearly 60 cubic feet of storage space. Approximately 57 is what they're saying right now. Now, it does appear that there's going to be a multi stage little cargo divider right up here cargo cover I guess you'd say right there and a multi-stage cargo load floor but no word on anything like spare tires or anything like that I don't expect to find one in the Equinox EV on the inside we have a really futuristic design especially considering the current generation Equinox and the Chevy Bolt up here we have their latest infotainment software this vehicle is a very 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 early prototype so we're not even allowed to sit inside this particular one but i can show you around you can see it's a really huge screen right there for the infotainment system and then a big screen for that instrument cluster i'm really excited to see exactly what the base model looks like apparently the base model is going to get different screens now as you can see on the steering wheel above there this will have super cruise so driver monitoring system super cruise display readout right there on the top of the steering wheel. This steering wheel is one of Chevy's newest designs. It's pretty similar to what we find in the Colorado and the Canyon. New buttons on the front, still controls on the back. The dashboard looks pretty expansive because they want to make this very aerodynamic. So there's a really long windshield profile, lots of soft touch materials up there, and these blue accents are making it to production. 
Over here in the center console, we have the controls for the climate control system, two cup holders, some storage areas right there. And this is a multi-level storage area. So right under there, there's a tier where you can put smaller bags, things like that down there in that storage area. Now taking a look at the seats, it looks like we're going to get a symmetrical seat design, at least in the upper end trims. So multi-way power driver and front passenger seat, two-way adjustable lumbar support here. Let's go ahead and see what the back seats look like. We're told to expect very similar kinds of interior volume to the gasoline Equinox, and it certainly looks like that from this angle. It looks like legroom is going to be pretty generous. Headroom, it's a little bit unclear at the moment because it's really just going to depend on how low the ceiling really is for the aerodynamic profile. As you can see there in that quick shot over, we have a pretty flat floor premium materials going on back here in the rear. And you can see that Chevy has decided to engineer this really aggressive cut in right there for the rear passenger's headroom area, even though this does have a moonroof. Now the moonroof does not appear to open, at least it doesn't in this prototype. Whether or not that changes for the production model, we won't know exactly for a while, uh, but it looks like there's a structural element just above that. It looks like we also have a padded center armrest with cup holders there, USB charge only ports, and the availability of rear heated seats. I've just had a quick answer to my last question, which is that we will have a power shade and a functionally opening moonroof. Hallelujah, it's something that we don't find in very many EVs at all currently. I'm really excited to see what the Equinox EV production numbers are like. This is going to be built in Mexico, so it's going to qualify for the $7,500 tax credit most likely when it launches. General Motors at this point says they're pretty confident about the sourcing of the materials for the battery pack, but we don't have all of those details yet. And remember that the EV tax credit is going to depend on where the battery pack components are sourced from. We should know more probably early next year about that particular detail. But General Motors is really interested in giving this the tax credit, so you can expect that they're going to figure out some way to make that happen. If you live in a colder climate, you probably should also put the Equinox above something like an Ionic 5 or a Kia EV6 because this is going to have a standard heat pump rather than an optional heat pump and it's going to be front wheel drive rather than rear wheel drive starting. An interesting twist with a lot of electric vehicles that we've seen come on the market recently is that they default to rear wheel drive like a Volkswagen ID4, etc. And that's not as convenient for people that really have to deal with inclement weather, snow, ice, etc. on a regular basis. Obviously, there's going to be an all wheel drive model as well, but if you're looking to save some cash, get the extra range and the extra efficiency, you can go with the front wheel drive model. It has that heat pump standard, and of course, it's going to be a little easier in the winter traction situations. Now, what models are going to be on sale first? Well, according to Chevy, the RS model is going to be the first one on sale. So that's going to be the higher performing one with the bigger battery pack, all the bells and whistles, the more expensive model. That's going to happen in 2023, probably fall of 2023. But they have said that in model year 2024, which will stretch into 2024, all versions are going to be available for sale. So you might have a little bit longer to wait if you want the base version of this. It's going to be probably about 18 months or so until you can actually get your hands on one. There isn't going to be a pre-order process like we've seen in other high demand vehicles. Chevy says that you'll just go to your dealer, you'll place the order. They're expecting much greater stock of this apparently than we've seen out of a lot of electric vehicles on sale in the US right now. Be sure and stay tuned because hopefully we'll have more information on on sale dates, whether or not this will qualify for the full federal tax credit etc. But all indications point to this being one of the few EVs available in America soon with a low MSRP, a high range, and the availability of that federal tax credit. See all of you later.